Silly sheep. All right, we're scything this property, uh, scything down the blackberries. Good sheep. All right, I already started hacking this one up. It's really, they're really thick towards the center, so I'm not gonna be able to cut uh, the center stalks. Um, so sh the lady has a shovel, so I'm gonna knock everything off that I can and so that I can get to the base and I'll be able to take her square nose shovel and um, and drive my drive it into the base of it and sever them hopefully we'll see all right these are the biggest blackberry bushes that I've ever tried to remove with the scythe and what I'm having to do is um, once I get it down to uh, where the the brown uh, branches are brown branches will uh, will chip my scythe blade all these these brown ones so I got it down to where the brown ones are and then uh, I go through with the flat nose shovel and I basically stab at uh, all the brown ones until until they're broken down and so as you can see I, I broke down all the brown ones here the flat nose shovel and I'm about to go over this one and break it break all the brown ones down and then after that uh, I'm gonna go through with the spade nose shovel over there and do what I did with this uh, which is take the tip of the spade spade shovel and drive it into the uh, the stock bases and that's how I'm going to um, I'm not I'm not taking these off uh, off property so I'm not technically removing them uh, they just wanted them uh, dead and dry enough by um, fire burn season um, coming up here in a month or so so that uh, that they'll be dry enough to light on fire and burn this whole first section took me two hours um, I think that uh, when I've done like two foot tall blackberries um, that have no no old growth in them. Uh, they're actually really fun to cut with the bush scythe. Um, but yeah, when they start to get like um, four foot tall, three foot tall, um, they start to get some uh, some dry um, blackberry canes uh, on the inside that will mess up my scythe. So I can't really like just swipe at it from the base. And knock it all down um, in an efficient way. I've got to, I got to swipe at it from the top and work it down to where the old growth is, and that's uh, that's not nearly as much fun. So in the future, uh, I will um, ask people for pictures uh, so I can give them a quote. And if their blackberries are, uh, well, I guess I can just uh, advertise. I guess I can just advertise um, that my Eco landscaping and scythe service um, is only capable of um, removing light, light uh, blackberries or blackberries that are three foot and shorter. And then that way I will only get calls about blackberries that are a fun job to do. Yeah. Learning. I learned a lot. I've only done a couple of uh, paid jobs, and each time I have learned more, what I've learned has been more of a benefit than what I'm getting paid, it seems like, because this only took two hours, so I expect I'll probably only get 20 to 30 bucks, which I'd be, I'm happy with, but what I learned is even more valuable, um, so that I can save time and commitment in the future not committing to things that uh, are um, outside the scope of, of scythe efficiency. <clears throat> All right. This property owner let us sleep here last night. And the sheep got to graze on the outside of the fencing. Because everything in here has been eaten by their horses. And... Uh, 
There she said, well, everything outside this fence needs to be hacked down too. So if I want to do that. And I was like, that is a perfect, perfect um, type of thing for my scythe. It's tall weeds. Uh, There's tall weeds back there beyond my ram. That's perfect. But her mower over there can't uh, can't run over that kind of stuff. So that's what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna save the town and all of this today. Got a couple acres here, at least. Yay, the horses love it. I took some of the scything and shoved it into their their hay feeder and they love it. Good horses. Yeah, the property out here isn't fenced fully, so they can't let their horses out here. Otherwise they'll they'll get away. But I can scythe it and rake it up with my hay rake and feed it to them. Yes, happy horses! Happy horses! So awesome. Every farm needs a farm hand with a scythe and a hay rake. So when the apocalypse happens, uh, and they're not able to buy hay. They can just have their farm hand collect it from uh, the other parts of their property and or off of their property. If they have a wagon like this, they can haul a lot of hay, wild hay, hand harvested hay back to the farm and maintain the animal's health. I love scything weeds. This is the perfect, perfect type of stuff for a bush scythe. So fun. The mower can't do this. Weed whackers have trouble doing this. It breaks their line. It's the perfect thing for this tool. This wispier stuff is gonna require a, a grass scythe. But you can go through with the, the one that's made for the thicker weeds first. Take them all down so you don't nick your, uh, your grass blade. It's much thinner and sharper. Like the grass blade wouldn't be able to get this heavy grass. I mean it would, but you might mess it up. Perfect for the bush blade. This hay rake is so awesome. I love it. It's actually fun to rake this stuff up. The teeth are perfectly spaced apart. Not so close to the snag on on the plant stubble and stems, but not too spaced apart where they lose a lot of a lot of the stuff that you cut. Perfect length of teeth. Perfect. Made for this. I love when a tool perfectly dialed for a job that's needed that no other tool can really do it efficiently. That's really awesome. Try not to hurt. Oh, I think I... I think I hit the... Oh, I snapped the... 
Sorry, Sunflower. I tried not to cut you. You live. And now you'll be horse speed. Happy horse, happy horse, oh yes, so happy. What a good horse. Getting it good. Good horsey, yeah. Oh my goodness, I love watching animals happily eat. Good horses. Happy, happy, happy. When you finish that, there's a whole lot more. And then after that, there's a whole lot even more. Look at that huge pile we got for you. Hacked down all that and made all of this hay, natural hay. There's still so much more. You guys are going to get even fatter and healthier. Look how healthy and shiny your, your coats are. You guys are already... You guys are already really healthy. And beautiful. Your owner must really supplement you with some good hay. Because you got a, a hay feeder down there on the gate. And there's no food... For you in here really you guys have eaten it all down to, to nubs down to stubble so she must feed you some really good alfalfa hay but now she doesn't have to feed you alfalfa hay because this stuff's even fresher and better she doesn't have to spend a lot of money on it and she doesn't have to be dependent on it because she's probably having to go a pretty far distance to transport it this is on your own land and it's sustainable super hyper local hey i got a joke for you guys what did the gay horse say hey get it you guys didn't think it was funny silly horses all right i'm gonna sight down this area next side of the hill all right, done with the hillside and I raked it all down into those two huge piles right there. The horse is leaning over, munching on. All right, we got everything over to their garden and all the way back to that shipping container. Scythe down now. And I got it raked all the way downhill. And I'm gonna throw it over to the horses. Yeah, they're loving it. Yay, wild hay. There we go. Got all the start this little over. I had to use the rake. I broke my rake. Broke a tooth on my rake. That sucks. I had it up leaning against a tree like this. And it freaking fell over fell over and, and hit that tooth and broke. So that sucks. Um, I love these hay rakes, uh, but they did have one website I saw had a version of this that was all wood except for the teeth. The teeth were made out of some plastic. And I assumed that that's because uh, the plastic teeth would be stronger than these wooden ones. So I'm gonna invest in a plastic, um, a plastic tooth uh, rake and see if I can find one that's a little bit wider because um, this is so light that it could afford to be a little heavier. 
and yeah, a wider swath would be awesome to, to be able to break up. And uh, yeah, three hours to do uh, all this section right here and then rake it downhill into that. Um, it was much more sparse here um, than it was on the side of the hill over there and especially back there in the corner.